Hello, everybody. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Good morning. Comment and say hello if you are here. Just getting my screens together. Hi, Deborah. Glad you made it. Ladies, I am really excited to put some makeup on. I have a couple of Mary Kay pampering sessions today, and they are in person, which is exciting for me. We don't do a ton of in-person appointments anymore. And look at this. I have this huge breakout on my chin, and I need to cover that bad boy up. So I'm looking at my screens. I'm hoping my lighting is okay. I'm sitting in front of a window. Don't want to cause too much glare. So comment if you are here and we're going to get started in about 30 seconds. Just want to give everybody enough time to hop on here and find the video. Type in the chat. Let me know what your plans are for the weekend. It's kind of a gloomy day. At least it's not cold anymore. Not like cold, cold. It's not super warm, but it's not cold. <laughs> All right. Okay, so if you've got all your uh, supplies from your sample kit, if you have your own makeup brushes at home, I recommend that you grab those. But I am going to be showing you how to use our essential brush collection, which I also did a full tutorial about the brush collection a couple of nights ago. It is actually below in this group. So you can actually go back in this group and watch that. But let's just dive right in. So first we're going to start with our foundation primer. So find your sample that's labeled foundation primer, SPF 15. This product is essentially spackling for your skin. It's making that nice, smooth, even canvas. So I just use about that much. So your makeup blends on more evenly. You get a more flawless application. It does contain SPF 15, an oil mattifier. I just apply this with my fingers. I start in the center parts of my face and I blend outward. And this is like a magnet for your makeup. It's just going to hold it in place a lot better throughout the day. So this significantly improves the application of your makeup and the wear of your makeup. And of course we get that added sun protection with the SPF 15. I have one of my serums kind of coming off my face as I'm <laughs> rubbing that on. Okay, so it doesn't that just feel silky smooth. I mean, I have some customers who use the foundation primer who don't even really wear foundation because they just love how it feels and it adds that protective barrier to your skin. Um, it's actually said that women who wear foundation on a more regular basis age more grace gracefully because it has that protective barrier. Okay, so um, locate your um, CC cream sample. I'm actually going to be using our liquid foundation just because I have some in-person appointments today and I've got this breakout, so I would love <laughs> to have a little extra coverage on my face. Uh, so you have the CC cream, the complexion corrector, and I'm going to be using our liquid foundation brush to apply my liquid foundation. So I recommend just using about a pea-sized amount of your CC cream. Getting my liquid foundation going here. And you can either uh, apply it with your fingers, which is not my preferred recommended way to apply it. But if you don't have a brush at home, you can. And that's the nice thing about the CC cream is it's visually a really light coverage. It's not as medium to full coverage as the liquid foundation. So if you don't blend it out perfectly, you're not really going to be able to tell. Um, liquid foundation, since it has a little bit more coverage, you, you will be able to tell a little bit more if it's not blended out well. So this is what I do. I just kind of dot it around on my face. And then I'm going to go back in with my brush and blend this out. So 
I prefer brushes to blend your foundation for a couple of reasons. First of all, you're just never going to get an even application with your fingers. You're just not. Just the texture of your fingers and the oils that you have on your fingers, you're never going to get an even application. So I recommend avoiding using your fingers to blend your makeup, uh, your foundation. I use my fingers for like my eyeshadow, but as far as your face makeup goes, let's just try our best not to. Um, sponges or beauty blenders are okay. They do give you an even application, but you have to use a lot more product because they absorb some of your product. Brushes, on the other hand, look, they have synthetic bristles. There's almost no absorption. You get a nice, even blend. And I use the luminous finish of our liquid foundation. The Stacey Cream is also going to kind of give you a dewy finish. It has SPF 15 in it and um, moisturizer. The CC Cream stands for complexion correctors. So it's just really going to help to neutralize any redness that you have on your face. Like I said, if you're looking for extra coverage, I do recommend our liquid foundation. It's amazing. Um, this really is like the best liquid foundation on the market for the price for sure. So now we're going to move on to concealers. So you did not get a concealer sample in your kit, but I'm going to show you our under eye corrector. And if you're following along on this little insert that came in your sample kit, some of these extra items I'm using are along the bottom here. So you can see the liquid foundation brush there on the bottom. Now I'm using the under eye corrector. It has sort of like a peachy pigment to it. And this is meant to counteract any blueness, purpley undertones that you have under your eye area. So it comes with this really easy little doe foot applicator. So I literally just go right in. And when we're using concealer around our eyes, we always want to use a minimal amount because the more product you use under your eye area, the more prone you're going to be to um, caking, seeping into your fine lines and wrinkles. And we definitely don't want that under our eye area and making them look worse. So then I'm taking a concealer brush. Again, I really prefer to not use my fingers um, because you're going to get a better, you, you use less product when you don't use your fingers. <laughs> I'll just say that you can get away with using less product because with this brush, I'm leaving all the product on my face. Whereas if I were to blend with my fingers, I would take some of the product off my face on my finger. So I get to use less product when I use a brush. Okay. Another item that's along your bottom part there is your translucent loose powder. This is my all time favorite powder with Mary Kay because it's clear. She's been eyeing the blending brush. I love the blending brush, Deborah. Um, that's really great as for, um, the, sorry, I got confused because we have an eyeshadow blending brush and a face blending brush. So I think you're talking about the face blending brush <laughs> with the handle and it's got the little pad that you kind of blend stuff around. Yes, I do like that brush. I go back and forth. Um, you know, sometimes I use that brush. Sometimes I use the liquid foundation brush. Sometimes I use the um, beauty blending sponge. They say that you get the most full coverage application using the blending brush. Okay, and then I have one more concealer I'm going to apply. So you see how that under eye corrector just instantly brightened and lifted my eyes. This is probably my main like must have product because your dark circles, ladies, there's not a lot of topical skincare uh, products that are gonna help with your dark circles. <laughs> Usually it's what's going on on the inside of our bodies that are contributing to our dark circles and or genetics. So it way more has to do with your stress levels, your hormones, your sleep, your diet. Um, so I recommend if you really struggle with dark circles, just get a really good concealer like our under eye corrector. Um, but then I have this little guy on my face. You can see, you know, my little foundation did a pretty good job of covering my face, but just for those extra extra areas where I just need that spot treatment. This is our perfecting concealer. So it comes in almost the same tube. Um, and the formula is very similar to the under eye corrector. It's just the color. So this is going to match my skin tone. The under eye corrector just comes in one shade. It's that like peachy pigment. I don't know if you can tell a difference there on your screen. So I'm using the perfecting concealer in light beige. And I love our um, face concealers because they're not really thick. A lot of times you get concealers that are 
kind of stopped talking there. So <laughs> that are really thick. And I really appreciate that ours are not. Okay. So again, I don't want to use my finger because I want it to all stay in the same spot. So when you have to spot cover an area like that, I recommend, I don't know if you notice, I just kind of patted out the edges of the concealer. I didn't go in the middle because I really want to stay concentrated. And then I'm gonna take some of our translucent loose powder and I'm gonna almost do the baking technique where I'm just gonna let the powder sit on there for a couple minutes while I do the rest of my face. And that's really going to help seal that concealer in. And it's called baking because the heat from your skin and the powder and the concealer, they all just kind of work together. <laughs> um, but you can use that translucent loose powder all over your whole face to set your makeup. If you prefer a more matte finish, as you can see, I've got the dewy finish going on. You can use the powder for that. I have dry skin, so I prefer a dewy finish and I prefer using the least amount of powder as possible. So if you have dry skin or if you're concerned about the look of fine lines and wrinkles on your face, I also recommend using the least amount of powder on your face as possible. Okay. So now we're going to do our face makeup and I promise I'll get to your samples in a little bit, but if you have any of these products at home that you want to kind of mimic with, you can. So I'm going to go in with our contour now. I'm actually doing more makeup this morning and then I typically do on a foolproof fab just because I do appointments today. So I need to do my full face. So I'm going in with our cheek brush and for contour, I start back by my ears. And I just create that fine line right underneath my cheekbone. And then I take a little bit more of that contour powder and I just dabble it around to the edges of my forehead. So yes, Deborah, you can absolutely exchange it. Um, I recommend, uh, I think Amy Hoaxma is your consultant. If you go to her Mary Kay website and you go under the makeup tab, face, and if you click on foundation, there's going to be a foundation shade quiz. I recommend you take that shade quiz. Believe it or not, it's actually fairly accurate. It just asks you some questions and it shows you examples of shades to find your closest match. Um, Amy can also mail you samples of foundation. Um, but yes, all of our products are 100% satisfaction guaranteed. So if you ever get something that's not perfect for you, you can exchange or return to your consultant. Okay, so you see how that contour just added some dimension back into my face because usually when we apply our foundation, sometimes we feel like we look washed out and it's not because we're using the wrong shade of foundation, it just made our face all one color. <laughs> so we wanna go back in with things like contour, blush, highlight. Um, so now let's do blush. So you should have gotten a blush sample. You have a little color makeup card with a couple eyeshadows and a blush. So let's see, which one, I feel like I should mix it up today. Um, I think I'm gonna use Shy Blush. This is a really popular one. It's like a corally pink and it's got a little bit of a gold shimmer to it. So it's almost like a blush and highlighter in one, you could say. And our blush, we're just going, so I did my contour right underneath my cheekbone. We're doing our blush directly on our cheekbone. So again, I'm gonna kind of start back by my hairline and just tap it forward. And I like to use a tapping motion when I'm applying my blush. I think that's how you get the softest look with your blush and you don't get that like smeared look if that makes sense and then I kind of go up a little bit towards my temple just to make it a seamless transition to that contour I love this cheek brush because I was able to go in with the skinny edge for my contour and then use the fat side to blend everything out. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra contour there for a little extra definition. 
Okay. I feel definitely more alive <laughs> once I get some color on my cheeks. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our eyes. I'm gonna start with my brows because I have a hard time doing the rest of my face when I don't have my brows done. So this is another product that's on the bottom half of your insert. If you have a brow pencil at home, you can go ahead and use that. This is our Precision Brow Liner. I love this product. It's a mechanical pencil, so you don't have to use a sharpener. And it's a really creamy formula, so it's so easy to apply. And if you mess it up, it's really easy to blend. But then, ironically, it also stays really well. It's just, like, the perfect brow pencil, in my opinion. So brow pencil is really meant to just fill in where you don't have enough brow hairs. So I just do this inner part of my brow, and I just do small strokes like that to mimic the appearance of brow hairs. I'm using brunette. I usually use dark brunette, but I wanted to try something that maybe looked a little softer today. And I'm kind of regretting it. I think I should have just stuck with my dark brunette, but that's all right. And I'm just gonna do one brow for the sake of time this morning. Okay, so you can already see the difference between this brow and this brow. It's just looking a little bit more defined. And then my second favorite brow product that I believe every person needs. I mean, just look from one half of my face to the other. Your brows make such a big difference in framing your face. This is our volumizing brow tint. So this is like mascara for your eyebrows. Um, this is the easiest way. We call this makeup class foolproof fab. This is the most foolproof way. This is like eyebrows for dummies and this product right here because you're just combing it through the brow hairs that you already have. You don't need to be a makeup artist. You don't need to know how to shape your brows perfectly. You just literally brush it through your brow hairs. All right, and it's got little fibers on there. So it builds volume on top of your brow hairs. And of course there's a color to it. So it tints them a little bit, but ladies, just look how quickly I went from that to that. Like such a difference, right? And so easy. I love our brow products. So they're the most user-friendly <laughs> brow products in my opinion. Okay. So now let's go to our eyeshadow. So first I'm gonna start with our eye primer. This is just a clear primer. It's just gonna help you get a more saturated application with your eyeshadow. It's gonna help it stay on your eye all day long and it helps to prevent creasing. I will say our eyeshadows are such high quality. They're gonna stay all day long, whether or not you use this, honestly, but this is just gonna give you obviously that extra fortification. So again, for the sake of time, I'm just going to do one eye just for our video and then I will finish the rest of my face <laughs> when we are done. So uh, you got three eyeshadows in your kit. Let's see, which one do I want to start with today? I think I'm gonna use candlelight and I'm gonna use our all over eyeshadow brush. So this is just a fluffy, rounded, pretty basic shape eyeshadow brush. Really good for applying color all over, hence it being called the all over eyeshadow brush. So with your lightest shade that came in your um, sample kit, start with your lightest shade and I'm gonna apply that on the inner corner and tear duct of my eye. And I'm gonna sweep this color up along the bottom of my eyebrow over my brow bone. 
I'm just gonna go across my eyelid a teeny tiny bit, like a third of the way across, and I'm just sweeping this up underneath my brow and my brow bone, and it's just creating that little bit of a highlighted effect. Candlelight, love that. It's a pretty neutral, like, skin tone kind of shimmery color which I love those neutrals. Okay, so now find your second shade, second darkest shade, which would be called your mid-tone. And I'm gonna use our crease brush. So it has this little bit of a tapered shape to it, which is really great for getting back into that crease where your eyeball goes back into your head. And so I'm gonna use hazelnut. Hazelnut is another one of my favorite daily neutrals. It's just kind of a, light matte brown kind of color and I call this the windshield wiper motion so I'm just getting it back into my crease and I'm just going back and forth just like a windshield wiper and then I'm blending it a little bit up towards my eyebrow not all the way towards but just to make again that seamless transition between this mid-tone color and that first color and to blend out any harsh lines. We don't want harsh lines with our eyeshadow. And you could stop right there. If you're just going for a really basic, like you like being put together but still pretty neutral on your typical work day or you're running a quick errand or going to a casual lunch, you could stop here put your mascara on or your um, eyeliner, but I'm gonna show you now how to take this from daytime to evening with your third color, which is gonna be more of like your accent tone. And for this, I'm gonna use our smudger brush. I love this smudger brush. It's got this shorter uh, bristles to it and this kind of dome shape, which makes it really nice for that precise application. So uh, for my accent shade, I'm going to use mahogany, which is kind of like a rich, chocolatey, matte brown color. And with this accent shade, I'm going to start on this outer corner of my eyelid, and I'm going to tap it along like a third of the way along my lash line. And then I'm gonna go back into my crease in sort of a V shape here and tap it like that. I'm also gonna take it down along my bottom lash line. So I'm somebody who prefers to not put eyeliner down here. I like putting eyeshadow as eyeliner because I think it gives you a little softer look than eyeliner, or if I do use eyeliner on my bottom lash line, I'll go in with this brush and blend it out just to make it look softer. Because anytime we have a really like stark, heavy line on our bottom lash line that makes our eyes look tired, that draws the attention down, and we want our eyes to look awake and open and lifted, right? So I'm just gonna keep kind of tapping this in here I might even fill in that V. And I'm gonna go back to my all over eyeshadow brush because it's a little fluffier. And I'm gonna use this just to blend out the edges of that shade. And I'm gonna blend it up. Notice how I'm never blending it like out this way because I want the eyeshadow to stay concentrated from here in. So I'm always blending kind of up and inwards towards my eyebrow and towards the center of my crease. And your eyeshadow, ladies, is really just all in the blending. Hey, this might be one of my new favorite color combos. I'm into that. All right, okay, last but not least, we're gonna move on to our eyeliner. 
So find your little eyeliner sample. You just got like a one-time use little guy in your kit. This is what the full size looks like. It's our mechanical pencil. It does come with this sharpener tip to it. I hardly ever use that just because, I don't know, I'm lazy or something. Um, but it does just turn up as well so you don't have to use the sharpener. If you want a really skinny, precise line, maybe you'd want to use it. I don't know. Up to you. So uh, for eyeliner, if you're really intimidated by eyeliner, think of it as connect the dots, not you know, drawing the perfect line. So eyeliner, the intention of it is to make your lashes look thicker. So when we apply hooded eyes, feel like you don't have much of an eyelid for shadows. That's a great question, Deborah. So for people with hooded eyes, you wouldn't put a lot of eyeshadow on your eyelid for that very reason. Depending on your eye shape, um, if you have deep set eyes, like if you don't have a lot of space like here between your lid and your brow, um, you might not just wear a lot of eyeshadow in general, or you would only wear it like a little bit in your crease area and blend it up as much as you can. Um, but if you do have shape up here, then I would only really focus your eyeshadow application above your crease because that makes your eye look more lifted than applying it on your crease, if that makes sense. Um, but you could also send Amy a picture and she could send me the picture and we could kind of give you some tips that are specific to your eye shape as well. Because that's the other thing to remember, ladies. Your eye makeup is not going to look like mine. Mine's not going to look like yours. You're not going to look like the makeup artist on Instagram with the, you know, videos with a million views because you don't have the same eye shape or face shape. So I'm on a video. You're on the screen. Okay. <laughs> That's my husband. Okay, so um, with the eyeliner, I'm just going right at the base of where my lashes are, and I'm just making kind of little dashes. I'm not worried about making the perfect line. Just little dashes. I already have some mascara on. I like keeping my eyeliner pretty uh, soft looking, neutral looking. I do like to do a little bit of a wing. And then I like taking a stiffer brush like this and sort of blending out the edges of the eyeliner just to make it look softer. And that's the other thing, you guys, if you feel like you messed up your eyeliner, just take a stiff brush, brush across it, blend it out, and you look like you've done a perfectly soft, smoky, you know, <laughs> professional looking eye. How do you get your wings even? You know, it takes a lot of practice, but are my wings ever perfectly even from one eye to the next? No. Like <laughs> when we get off this video, I'll do the wing on this side and it's not gonna be perfectly even. Um, a trick that you could use is you could take either a piece of paper or a business card and you can use that as your guide. Or my favorite is actually taking just clear scotch tape and putting pieces of tape and using that as your guide and then you pull the tape off and you get it's kind of like when you paint a room when you use tape and you take the paint off and you get that perfectly crisp edge i'll use that sometimes with wings especially if i'm um doing it for like a really special occasion or i'm doing a dramatic eye or something and then wings are also again going to depend on your eye shape there are some people whose eye shape like they just cannot wear a wing because their eye shape doesn't allow it um and oftentimes people with hooded eyes for example like you have deborah do have to draw them a little bit differently my eyes are kind of hooded they're like mid hooded because i have an asian eye shape so i have to do my wing a little bit differently than somebody who doesn't have that eye shape um but moral of the story is i never get them perfectly even 
lots of practice. <laughs> um, and then you can even use a little bit of concealer. You might've noticed I took this concealer brush that I used for my under eye corrector and I just kind of brushed it against that line just to make it a little more crisp in the edge there. So, all right. So there's our eye shadow look, everybody. So go ahead and apply your mascara. You got the ultimate mascara in your sample kit. So I already have our waterproof mascara on. I curled my eyelashes. That is a indus an industry secret is that if you curl your eyelashes, apply a coat or two of waterproof mascara first thing because waterproof mascara is going to hold the curl better than regular mascara. And then I just go back in afterwards with my regular mascara just to add a little extra volume and length to my lashes. And then whether or not you want to do mascara on your bottom lash line is totally a personal choice. I'm going to today just because I put that eyeshadow down there. I have pretty sparse bottom lashes, so I don't always put mascara down there. All right. Last but not least, you can put your lip color on, ladies. Um, but I'm just going to go over, oh, here, I'm going to brush off this powder that I had setting my concealer here. Go ahead and put your lipstick on while I'm brushing off my extra concealer. And then this is our cream to powder. Oops, I could get it open. Cream to powder foundation. Um, you can get your entire face in one palette in Mary Kay because we have palette foundation. I'm just going to dab a little bit of this on top of my big breakout just to make sure it has that extra stain power. <laughs> okay, so look at that Mary Kay makeup. Besides the obvious bump there, it got rid of all of the redness from that gigantic breakout on my face. All right, so let me go over our specials that are available to you today with our little insert sheet here, everybody, foolproof to fabulous. So your base section is your foundation primer and your Stacy Creamer liquid foundation. So this is the liquid foundation that I'm holding up here in the base part, the C it shows the Stacy Cream. So that's your base. And then your color is your palette. So this is our perfect palette. It's called the perfect palette, obviously, because it's the perfect little handheld si size here. And it has a mirror in it. And the great thing about our palettes is these are magnetic surfaces. And all of our makeup comes in these magnetic um, rectangular shapes. And so even, for example, the cream to powder foundation, you see how that's a square. So you could potentially put that in with this palette. Our pressed powders are also squares. Um, our contour and highlight powders are rectangles. This is a blush. So you could put a contour and a highlight in the other side here. But the set and the price that you're seeing on your little insert here is your three eyeshadows and your blush and the palette. So what you put on the other side is up to you. You could do mini palette tools like a cheek brush or an eyeshadow brush or you could add your powder, your foundation, highlight contour, or you could do six more eyeshadows. It's totally customizable. I love our palettes. And then under the rest of the color section, you have your ultimate mascara, your eyeliner, and your lipstick. All right. And then the special deal of the day is the foolproof fab set. So that's your base and all of your color. 
It's a $144 value and you get it for $129. So it's basically your entire face of makeup for $129. And ladies, Mary Kay makeup lasts forever. Like you might've said, wow, those eyeshadows look really small. Years. <laughs> These will last you years because our makeup is really high quality and really highly saturated. So you only need to use a little bit at a time. And then when you purchase the foolproof fab set, you can add any of these items along the bottom for 50% off. You can add all six of them <laughs> for 50% off if you want. So the essential brush collection is the all over powder brush, the cheek brush, and then you get three amazing eyeshadow brushes. Your all over eyeshadow brush, your eye crease brush, and your eye smudger brush. So you get five incredible brushes and a really sleek, black brush uh, zip pouch for only $55. Ladies, you'll spend $15 or $20 on a good quality brush at Target. <laughs> okay, and then you have your under eye corrector, which is the concealer that I use for my dark circles. The translucent loose powder, which is the clear powder, really fine. I'm obsessed with this powder. Our liquid foundation brush, which does not come in the essential brush collection. And then both of your brow tools. You've got your volumizing brow tint and your precision brow liner. All right. Well, thank you for joining me this morning, Deborah. Or anybody else who watched in my client group, I appreciate you guys. I'm going to go do the rest of my face, but have a wonderful rest of your Saturday. And I hope to see you back on one of our live videos soon. Bye-bye.